What I'm going to do in this video is show how I set up a laptop computer to be a home theater PC. Now this is a laptop from a previous video. I added a second hard drive to it by placing a hard drive into a caddy which then replaced the DVD drive in the laptop. So this computer has a 120 gigabyte solid state drive as the C drive and now also a hard drive for extra storage. Now the first thing I'm going to do is get this laptop connected to a television. And in this case, just for setup purposes, before I actually move it into the living room, I'm going to be connecting it to the television I have wall mounted in my office. So I'm going to take an HDMI cable, which is connected to the television already, and I'm going to plug it in to the HDMI port on the back of this laptop. So I'm going to turn on the monitor and get it changed to the correct input. And this cable is connected to the HDMI 2 port. Okay, so the computer detected the television and what it's done is, by default, it's cloning what's on the main display on the laptop to the television. I'm going to right click on the desktop and go into graphics properties. And this is an Intel graphics chip. So if you have an Intel graphics chip in your laptop or regular computer, it will look very similar to this. I'm going to choose advanced mode because it gives me all the settings as opposed to basic which just doesn't show you everything. Okay. So the resolution it's running at is 1366 by 768 and that is the resolution of the monitor that's built into the laptop. While it's cloning the main display to the television, it's limiting that resolution to the same resolution as the laptop. And in this case what it's doing is it's not using all the screen to show the display. And that is not what we want uh, in a home theater setup. So what I'm going to do is go into multiple displays and the operation mode is clone displays. Instead I'm going to change that to a single display and change the primary display from the built-in to the television and click apply. What that does is it disables the built-in display and now the television is the primary. I'll click OK to make that take effect and stay. If I go back to general settings under resolution it's still set at the native resolution of the internal display but I can click that and change it to the native resolution of the television which is 1920 by 1080 and this is a 1080p full HD monitor. I'll click apply and OK and it's now using the full display for the image. I'll click OK. Okay, so there's a few more changes I need to make to the laptop and they're under the power options. On most computers the power options will be down here by the clock. And if you right click on the icon you can go to power options. Occasionally the power options will be hidden under this little up arrow so if you click it, it'll be under there. Another way to get to power options on Windows 8 and Windows 10 is to right click on the start button, go to control panel, hardware and sound, and then power options. Another way to do it is to click the start button and this works from Windows Vista on to Windows 10 for the most part. Sometimes it doesn't work, but if you just start typing power power options very often shows up. So you can just click on it and you're into power options. Okay, so it's on balanced power and that's fine. What it'll do is whenever the computer's not busy it'll slow down the processor so it doesn't get as hot and it saves some energy. But when it is busy and has things to do it will raise up the speed of the processor to get the job done. So I'm going to go to change plan settings and right now, and by default, usually, it uh, will be set, when plugged in, 
to turn the display off after a period of minutes and to put the computer to sleep after a certain amount of time. Now, in this case, I don't want the display to be turned off and I don't want the computer to go to sleep if I'm not interacting with the computer because I may be setting things to download and sometimes those can take hours and I don't want the computer going to sleep while I'm downloading files. Also, I may be watching a movie for more than 15 minutes and I don't want the display to be turned off if I'm not touching the mouse or the keyboard. So on both of these under plugged in, I'm going to set them to never. So the display will not turn off and the computer will not go to sleep after a period of time of me not interacting with the computer. On the battery setting, just in case the power goes off and it's running on battery, it makes sense for the display to turn off after five minutes and the computer to go to sleep after a period of time. And those times seem reasonable to me. So I'm going to click Save Changes. Another change I'm going to make is what happens when I close the lid of the laptop. I'm going to be wall mounting this behind the television. So the lid will be closed pretty much all the time. And ordinarily, whenever you close the lid on a laptop, it will put the laptop to sleep. So I don't want that. So I'm going to come over here and choose what closing the lid does. So when plugged in, when I close the lid, I'm going to change it from sleep to do nothing and click Save Changes. Now if I close the lid on the laptop, it stays on. And that's what I want. Now before I head into the living room, let's talk about the types of connections. Spin this laptop around. So right now I've got this television connected to the HDMI port. If I take it out, it loses that connection. And if I open up the laptop, the display starts working again. So you're never going to lose your display and see, not be able to see what's happening on the laptop. Now the HDMI is the most common type of connection that you'll find on the back of a television. Another you may find and might be able to use is the VGA connection. This is also called D-sub because it kind of looks like a D. And this is an analog connection. Also keep in mind that it's video only. Whereas HDMI and the other display connections types I'm going to be talking about can carry audio and video. A D-sub or VGA only carries video. So in addition to a video cable, you'll also need an audio cable to be plugged into the headphone jack of your laptop and then on the other end plugged into the television. Also with a, uh, if you're going to be using a VGA connection, uh, the cables that you'll find look like this. And these are two different VGA cables. But you can see they have the same pins, the same kind of connection. But if you're going to be using a VGA cable, make sure you get one that's a little bit thicker and not unnecessarily long. If you use one that's thin like this or maybe a little bit too long, what you'll end up with very often is the screen just not being very sharp. And in a worst case scenario, you'll get um, interference on the screen like wavy uh, lines and basically not good. So if you're going to be using VGA, make sure you get one with a, a thicker cable. The other kind of connection on a laptop for video output is going to be a display port, which is this one right here. And if you do have display port and only display port on your laptop or computer, and that's the only really connection other than VGA that you'd want to use, a display port, it would be very unusual to find on the back of a television, but you can get a display port to HDMI cable because they are compatible with each other. And I'm talking about this mostly uh, connecting a laptop to a television, but really you can connect a regular computer to your television as well, which will give you uh, much better gaming capabilities with a, uh, a higher end uh, graphics card than you can 
get in most laptops. But whether you do a laptop or a desktop connected to your computer, the process is essentially the same. So I'm going to be connecting this laptop to a 1080p television using the HDMI out to an HDMI input on the television. And if you're dealing with a 1080p television, as long as you get HDMI 1.3 or 1.4 cables, that will do fine. If you have a 4K television, you're going to need HDMI 2.0 cables, as well as an HDMI 2.0 capable port on the computer, either a laptop or a desktop. Now, a laptop, unless you get a very, very high-end one and recent, is not likely to be able to put out a 4K video signal. You're much more likely to get 4K support out of a desktop. But before you go purchasing things and hooking it up, it's good to find out if the computer, either a laptop or a desktop, is capable of outputting a 4K signal. And that has to be supported by the graphics chip in the computer. It needs to be an HDMI 2.0 port on the computer, either a laptop or a desktop. The cable has to be HDMI 2.0. And the input, the HDMI input on the television, has to support HDMI 2.0. That's really the only way you can ensure that you're getting a true 4K signal at 60 frames per second. The main difference between HDMI 1.4 and 2.0, they can both put out a 4K signal, but 1.4 will only put out 30 frames per second, or 30 hertz. The HDMI 2.0 gives you 60 frames per second, or 60 hertz, which is important for smooth video, especially if you're playing games. Okay. So I'm going to turn off my monitor here. I call it a monitor. It's actually a television. You can kind of see it. I don't know if it shows up on the video, but it's, it's a Vizio television is what it is. I just covered it up with some electrical tape. All right, so this is still on. If I open it up, still going because I set it not to go to sleep when I close that. Take out the little transceiver for my mouse here, and take all this into the living room. Okay, so got my laptop here. Just gonna set it down for a minute. And the television I've got on a single arm swivel and I've already put some mounts on the wall for the laptop I've got it so that it goes right up against the wall just like that. So I've got the power there. I'm going to be plugging the HDMI cable in right there and it's already connected to the television. Okay, so I will plug in the HDMI cable which is in the HDMI 2 port on the television. Just kind of push that back for a second. Okay, so you may be thinking well, how are you going to control the computer? Well, I've got these two little transceivers in a USB hub that I'm going to plug in. So these transceivers, this one is for a wireless keyboard and trackpad combo, and this one is for a wireless gamepad. So I'm just going to plug this into one of the USB ports, and it's just kind of dangling down. And the main reason I did this, even though I do have two available uh, USB ports, it's best with these kinds of transceivers to get them away from the laptop. It helps to cut down on interference and gives you a, a better connection. So I'm going to turn on the television. And right now it's on the UVerse input. I'm going to hit input on the remote. 
and change to PC. I renamed this to PC, it's actually the HDMI 2 port. And there's my display. Okay, so it looks like it's a little bit off as far as the uh, the resolution or the picture settings. I'm going to go into menu on the television remote. And I'm thinking under advanced settings, yeah, overscan is turned on. I'm going to turn that off. And that'll give me, what overscan does is it kind of zooms in on the video. And what uh, what it does in practice is it makes things go off the edge. So turn that uh, overscan to off. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, so this is the wireless keyboard and trackpad. So I can use the trackpad to move around the mouse cursor and it's got a left and right mouse button built in right there, but it also has one a left mouse button up here at the top left corner. So I can use it to do clicking. Okay, so the laptop is pretty well set up. It's back behind the television. I'm going to be able to push the television back so it's hidden. And you'll notice the icons are definitely big enough for me to, to read, and that's important when you're sitting back on a couch or wherever you sit. I'm going to go into the display settings. Scroll down here. I've got the change the size set to 150%. It looks like Windows did that automatically. If on your computer it didn't do a change to the size automatically, if it's by default, in most cases, set to 100%, depending on the size of the screen and how far back you sit and the resolution, it may make just about everything on the screen a little bit too small to read comfortably. So this is one thing you can do is come in here to the display settings and change it to maybe 125%, which makes it a little bit bigger. But on this television, this size television and the, dis the distance I'll be sitting back, I'm thinking 150% would be a little bit better. And this is what looks like Windows 10 is recommending, is for this resolution for the size to be set to 150%. Okay, so I'll close out of that. And I'm going to go about plugging in the laptop's power adapter and getting it up out of the way. What I'm going to do is wind this up and I'm going to put it right on top of the laptop right there. Get a rubber band and go around it. That should be tight enough. I'll just kind of get it set up here. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to get this cable up and kind of out of the way so it's not dangling on the bottom. So now I can just push the television back against the wall. And aside from it being a little bit cockeyed, I'd be done. But I also have this AT&T U-verse wireless receiver, basically a cable box that I need to do something about because it's just sitting here on the floor. So what I'm going to do is show you how I wall mounted basically the laptop. I'm going to go ahead and for right now disconnect its power and its HDMI cable. And what I did on this side is I used a couple of brackets that I got at the home store to mount the laptop to the wall. And let's see. Where's that? Yeah. So it came in a pack of four, and this is the leftover one. I only used three to mount the laptop, but basically this is what I used. Um, you can find these at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever home store you have near you. 
They're called generally called corner braces, and these are three inches. So what I did is I secured that to the wall, and I bent up this part right here to so it's vertical. And at the top, I did pretty much the the same thing, put it like there, and bent that part down. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing to this television receiver. So I need to decide where on the wall it's going to go behind the television. Set that right there, and I think I've got a pencil. Yeah. So... Move the television over. Kind of get it out of the way. All right, so I was thinking maybe right there. I'm going to take the receiver, kind of set it where I want it to be. I don't want it too far above these, just because I don't want it to be showing on the other side of the television. Somewhere around there, I think, would be good. So. It's about level. I'm just going to mark approximately where the corners are. So what I'm going to do is put this up against the wall approximately like that. Having two brackets at the bottom to hold it in and one at the top. So. That would be up against the wall, so what I need to do is bend up this part right here so it's vertical and we'll hold the cable box to the wall. Now, to get this bent, well, first, so I need to put the bend approximately, I'd say, an inch in. Just kind of eyeball it. So, let's see, I need some vice grips. Grip it about right there, and I'll use some channel locks to grab onto it and bend it up. Almost. Okay. Let's see how that did. be like that. It's not bad. Okay. Get another one out. And try and put on the approximately the same bend on this one. So, side by side. That one's definitely a little bit tighter. Let's see if it still goes around. It'll be just like that. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. Now, options to mount the brackets onto the wall. So, for the laptop, I used these and these are generally referred to as auger anchors here they just say drywall anchor but they're generically referred to as auger anchors because they kind of twist in uh, like an auger does uh, augers can can be used to dig up dirt but basically it it twists in it uh, it holds up to 75 pounds um, but this is probably overkill um, the uh, the cable box 
it doesn't weigh much at all. It feels like it's about 90% air, really. So I think these would be overkill. What I'm going to use instead are these. And these are also referred to as drywall anchors, but they're for much lighter loads. But basically, you make a hole in the wall approximately as wide as these. Stick these in the wall, and then the screws go into the anchor. And as they go in, it pushes out on the sides of the anchor, which grips it onto the drywall. So I'm going to use these to, uh, to attach the brackets to the wall. So grab up our brackets and the cable box. Take my pencil. Uh, let's see. So I want it to be essentially like that. Mark there. And there. I'm going to start by making a hole with this screwdriver. There's always a possibility when you're doing this you'll hit a, uh, a wall stud, and in that case you can just use a regular screw because it'll grip into the wood. I'm going to go ahead and make the first small hole over here as well. Okay, I'm going to make the hole a little bit bigger using a larger screwdriver. And this should be approximately the correct width for the anchor to go in. Push them in. All right. So now if I get the screws and a screwdriver, I'm going to go through that top hole. like that. Don't have to make them particularly tight. It's okay for them to move around a bit, especially while I'm finishing the fit. wants to sit in just like that and that would almost be okay without putting a top one in. I think I may do that just leave it loose up here because seriously that's not going anywhere. All right so it looks pretty good there. So let's see. Plug in the, the power. and the HDMI. Yeah, that's fine. Now, if this was a laptop or something a little bit more expensive or, uh, or heavy, I'd certainly put in one here at the top like I did over here for the laptop, but really, that's not going anywhere. That's fine. So, okay, so right now the Power is plugged in down here to the wall, but I want to actually hide that a little bit better behind the television. Plug it in up there. Right now it's dangling. 
what I'll do is kind of bind this up. Oh, I wish I was more dexterous. Something like that. Okay. So this is actually going to, going to come this way, so let me get that a little bit better off. See if I can actually hook it on there. Yeah, that, that very well may work. And this I'm going to bring up and kind of hook it there. So cable box, Roku, laptop, power strip that I mounted to, uh, to the wall with these uh, drywall anchors I just used to do this. And let's see. Now the Roku, I'm gonna unconnect its cable. And this could definitely be done prettier probably come back and redo it just to make it pretty but for right now just to get it up there something along those lines so I should be able to just push the television back all right all right that's as far back as it'll go okay so I'm pretty happy with that. That'll work. Now the power cord down at the bottom, it does bother me. <laughs> this, the thing is, this is a rental house and the hole that I would put in the wall to hide that power cord would be a little bit too big for me to just patch later when I move out and probably cost me some money and uh, make the landlord not too happy with me. So I'm gonna live with that there and do is just take my daughter's toy bins and put them right there. Pretty well hides it. I can live with it. So that's how I set up a laptop computer to be used as a home theater PC and wall mounted hiding behind the television. Thanks for watching.